and we're praising the Lord today because we have everything we need to go fishing tomorrow, uh, including the ingredients for Jello chicken bait. And the purpose of this video is to show how to make it and hook it. So I uh, got the strawberry uh, Jello, or this is the store brand imitation, boneless uh, chicken breast. And I've got the hooks here to sort of demonstrate how the sizing works because uh, the art of cutting the chicken is to fit on the hook. So it's come alive, wake up sleeper, he is risen, we are risen with him. Uh, one of our favorite hooks is the 7 uh, Gamma Gatsu Offset uh, J hook here. And we like this hook for fish over about five pounds, and it's got the strength and it's the right size for fish between five and 50 pounds. Uh, we like to target some smaller, more eating size fish also when we're fishing, and this is our favorite hook for that. It's the Gamagatsu Offset J hook in size three aught. And this is our favorite hook for fish between two and five pounds. And if you happen to hook up with something between 10 and 20 pounds, uh, we land plenty of those fish also on this hook. Uh, so this is pretty simple. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, many people have questions about is whether or not you add water, uh, whether or not you add other ingredients. And uh, there are different approaches people take to it. Uh, but no, we don't add water. We don't add other ingredients. No garlic, no this, no that. Uh, but we do prefer jello or gelatin to uh, Kool-Aid because it's, it's not so much the strawberry that we're after or the red coloring. It's the proteins that are actually in the gelatin uh, because there's some science that shows uh, that the proteins in the gelatin actually stimulate feeding in catfish. So we start by pouring about half the gelatin into a quart uh, Ziploc freezer bag. And we don't use a freezer bag because we freeze it. We just use the freezer bag because it's a little stronger uh, and less likely to, to tear or fail in the process. Okay, so uh, the point is just to cut the chicken into sizes that will fit on the hook. So if you were going to focus mostly on larger catfish, uh, with the seven odd size hook, your chicken pieces might be about this size, and uh, we're going to cut them. We're going to put them there with the gelatin. We're going to shake them up. The gelatin really doesn't change how you hook it, uh, but a piece about this size and shape, I would simply hook like that. The key when you're hooking Jello chicken is to have a properly sized piece of bait and the barb and the point, the business end st sticking out. So when the catfish gets it in its mouth. Uh, the hook is exposed and it's going to get hooked. Okay, so that's about the right size for this size hook. Now for the smaller hook, you need a smaller piece of chicken and there are different ways to do it. Uh, you can do strips or you can do smaller cues, whatever you like. I, I don't really have a strong preference with that. Uh, so for the smaller hook, uh, it could be a smaller piece of chicken and you just uh, hook it in through one side, uh, out through the other, and the point is that the uh, barb and pointy part of the hook are exposed uh, poking out of the chicken. Now this is raw chicken, so all the food safety issues uh, surrounding raw chicken do apply. Uh, in other words, you don't want to handle raw chicken either when you're preparing it for bait or later on when you're putting on your hook. You don't want to be handling the raw chicken and then, you know, eat a sandwich or something like that without washing your hands uh, because of the risk of salmonella and other sort of chicken-borne pathogens. So all the usual disclaimers with regard to raw chicken apply. Now let me also mention, a lot of people, they'll, they'll kind of learn something from one of my videos and then they'll get back to me and say, okay, well, I did this and such. Why didn't it work? Well, you know, there's a lot to catching catfish and catching fish, but one of the things we've learned is important is prayer. So I don't want to hear in the comments or on the Facebook, hey, we're not catching fish. Uh, most of the time, the book of James says, 
you don't have because you don't ask God. And when you do ask, uh, God doesn't answer because your, your motivation is wrong. It's to spend what you get on your pleasures. So you can pray and ask the Lord for your daily bread. Hey, Lord, we're going fishing. Help us out, we pray. Help us catch some fish to have for dinner. Uh, you know, give us today our daily bread, that kind of thing. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. And my experience is the Lord answers those pray, uh, prayers uh, because the Bible says, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the birds of the air and the beasts of the field and the fish of the sea. So, you know, with prayer, because Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, we can rule over the fish of the sea or the fish of whatever lake or river we're fishing in. Uh, but what, we, what we're not given to, notice what's not in that blessing, is the ability to rule over other men. So if our motivation is more, you know, it's, hey, I got a bigger fish than you, yada, 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 I'm better, whatever, whatever it may be. Uh, well, the Lord might not answer those prayers. So, let's have some humility out there. Let's not think we're better than all the other anglers. And let's, let's not even want to be angler, better than all the anglers. Because the competition is not with the other anglers. The competition is with the catfish. Or whatever species of fish you happen to be uh, hoping for. So we just pray. We ask for our daily bread. We ask the Lord to bless our efforts and our situation. And uh, usually the Lord does. And the Lord provided the jello chicken, the Lord provided the gas, and the boat, and the rods, and the reels. Uh, and the Lord provided everything we need for this fishing trip tomorrow. And we're going to pray. We got our jello chicken. We're bringing some cut shad too. Um, one of the things I really like about the jello chicken, uh, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's the best bait we've ever tried. To, I don't think it is, uh, but what I'll tell you is that it's very cost effective. I mean, we really like shad, uh, but sometimes you can't get shad, or if you have to buy shad, shad's not as cost effective. Um, but you know, kind of like me as a fishing buddy, I might not be the best fishing buddy, but I'm the cheapest. Um, Jello chicken might not be absolutely the best catfish out, bait out there, but it's effective. And it's just about the cheapest. Thank you, Jesus, for providing the jello chicken we need uh, to go fishing with tomorrow. And so that's it. You know, I don't try and freeze this or anything. I just make it up the day before, put it in the fridge, or put it in the ice chest, uh, hook it up as we go, um, and uh, it'll do fine. Don't add any water. When it comes time to fish, just take these out of the ice chest, put them on the hook. I put my faith in Jesus. My anchor to the ground My hope